What's good, community circuit fam? How you want to put it? I'm um, Marcello, Presidio Justice, our original member. Um, talk to you a little bit about my history of the club. You know, the name of the club, actually, Los Jets has been around like for ages. It comes from uh, Puerto Rico. We are bronze based club, but you know, the name actually comes from Puerto Rico back in the 70s. You know, a lot of brothers out there that know just by reading the name, they know what I'm talking about. You know, I could throw a lot of stuff out there, but you know, a lot of stuff I gotta keep it, you know, to myself. But look, 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 the name of Los Jesus been out forever. Like I said, back in the 70s, it comes from a brother that um, we actually used to call him Robin Hood because he was a person that um, he used to like take, take from the rich and give to the poor in his community. And um, back in, in 1991, well, this, um, this brother got killed in jail and um, the name of Jets became into something else. And um, back in uh, 2000, a couple of brothers out here, you know, we decided to, um, my brother Papo, AKA Killer, a lot of them known by Killer, and Edgar, you know, they got together and they said, you know what, let's keep the name alive, Los Jesters, as Los Jesters, instead of keeping it alive as what it was known back then after Los Jesters. So um, they got together, they put the name together, well, basically the name was already there, and um, they decided to create a logo, which was putting a face to the name. And if you know what a jester is, a jester is like a clown. A jester is someone that uh, entertains the king, so-called. So, -called. so uh, we came out and actually we did a joke at first. And then since there was a couple of, we did our homework and there was a couple of things that we seen that already had jokers on it and stuff like that. So we decided to alter it a little bit and we made it look like an evil clown but at the same time with uh just the features you know so um basically this was done in uh in uh 2000 july of 2000 actually um when uh, my brother came home papo aka killer when he came out because prior to that um we was part of something that was called silo auto club but back then in 1997 we really didn't have a knowledge of what direction we wanted to go. The reason why we uh, named that club um, CeeLo, and CeeLo, I'm giving you credit right now because I don't got to do this, but I'm going to put it out there because, you know, I'm one of the founders of the club. The reason why we came out with that name was because we was always on the block. A lot of guys were playing CeeLo. And at the same time, we were doing stuff for the community. And when I say community, for that block that we used to live on, which was on 167 and Longfellow Avenue. So, like for the summertime, we used to like close half of the block down and had barbecues and had the ice cream truck and the icy truck going all day, you know, for the kids in the neighborhood. So uh, then, you know, in 2000, CeeLo went another direction and we decided to go another direction because, um, as we got a little older into uh, into the lifestyle, we decided this is what we want to do and this is what we, where we want to go. And that was one of the reasons why, you know, the name was uh, founded. And like in every family, bro, no matter how close you are, you're always going to have disagreements with your brothers or with your closest friends. So, you know, basically that's what happened. CeeLo kept on and until this day, you know, the club is still out there. And um, we still out here. You know, they supported us and we still support them if we have to support them whenever they do, do decide to do something. You know, but the name is still out there. As far as justice, when in 2000, you know, we came out, we had a different vision. You know, we wanted to go and do the MC, the MC world, being the MC community, but being that we didn't have no motorcycles at that time. I mean, we had motorcycles, but they were illegal. And then there were dirt bikes. And the bikes that we did have, we used to turn them on with a screwdriver. So basically, they were illegal. Half of the bikes, I don't even know where they came from, you know? But um, 
you know, that was our theory from the beginning. So um, when uh, we decided to come out, um, we reached out to a lot of um, motorcycle clubs and a few auto clubs that was out here that you could have count them with, the, you know, with the fingers on your hand. You know? Like who? You had, um, you had... Who was out here like at that time? Okay, you had um, Mila. You had a Capicu. These are Bronx clubs. You have Borinquen Riders. And you had a club called La Familia, which, you know, their logo was based on a handshake. You probably see them one or two around, but they're not out there. I, I, I believe they're not out there as a club, like, like I, not like a club, but not the lifestyle, not the way we live it. Because for a lot of us, this is a hobby. For a lot of us, it's a lifestyle. For me, this is a lifestyle, because I live this every day. And a lot of my members, they live this every day. And basically, like, you know, when we started, we started with about 50 members. The reason for that is there was not, like I said, there was not a lot of auto clubs out there. So it was like, I got to pick and choose where I want to go. And, you know, you learn through experiences and you learn by extending your hand and giving people chances. At the, end of, at the end of it all, you know, a lot of, a lot of our members didn't want to go to the direction we were going. And our thing was to, you know, make this better. And um, as far as um, let's live this lifestyle the right way. So since there was but a few other clubs out here, we decided to go into the MC community and get the knowledge from them. So we got the blessings from a couple of MC clubs back in the days when we came out and presented our logo because we did Los Justice Auto Club and we threw MC on it. Really, we didn't know what we were getting into. We didn't have a lot of knowledge of where we were going, but we did the things the right way. We reached out and we gave respect to those that deserved the respect at that time. We had um, United Roadrunners, we had Wild Aces, and then they turned into true aces. You still have wild aces, but not in the Bronx. They're like in other boroughs and in other towns. And uh, we had our motorcycle clubs from Harlem. You had Harlem Extremes. Um, we had uh, Cad um, Cadillac Gems. You know, these were, to mention a few clubs that we had reached out to back in the days when we did decide. And you know, we got the blessings to do what we had to do and come out that way. Because I mean, you can't carry and this we learned as we went by, you cannot carry two names under one vest. Either you one or the other. Either you are out of club or you are MC. But for us, we decided to live the MC life. The rules we go by are MC. You know, and um, I always like saying this because every time I say it, I never get no feedback. But um, we was the first out of club in the Bronx to put on colors and to wear vests. All the other clubs that was out here had t-shirts. You know, a week later, then one club came out with their colors and then so and so forth, you know what I'm saying? But um, as far as our borough in the Bronx, we was the first out of club and I say, I mean, whoever you wanna see it, you have to reach out to me. My number is 347-681-9413 or you can reach out to the founder of the club, Papo Killer, which is well known in the community. Right now he resides in PA. I'm gonna get a PA, I'll get to PA in a second. But um, I just wanna go back on when, you know, when we started back in July 2000 and the early 90s when we were mixing and matching. And um, <clears throat> we started going, to, you know, we, st we decided to explore. So, you know, we started going to Brooklyn. We started crossing that bridge, hitting clubs in Brooklyn. I mean, back in the days, I mean, you got a lot of clubs out here right now that I'm gonna say this and they'll be surprised, like, wow, we didn't know that. I mean, we used to go to SPMG's um, clubhouse. It was up in Trotman before, you know, and um, we know Manlo for a long time. You got uh, Phil back in the days was part of um, SPMG. And then he did his own thing, the click. But you know, these are just to mention a few, these are clubs that we used to mess with back in the days. Transit Wheelers was a club we used to go to a lot because um, Transit Wheelers had their divisions too. They got AC and they had um, MC back then. 
So, you know, these are clubs that, you know, we always cross the bridge and we did, we did hit all those broken clubs back then, you know, and um, it's like, uh, like I said, you know, it's, it, it's a lifestyle and for us it's something that, you know, it's, it's never going to stop. You know, we continue, we're trying to do the best for the community with the help of clubs that do want to be part of it. And you know, if you don't want to be part of it, you know, you're still going to get the same respect. But the game has changed a lot. That's how come we don't have the respect as out of clubs. I'm going to rephrase myself as an out of club now. We don't have that much respect as out of clubs now with other entities and clubs because of the way a lot of clubs are. A lot of clubs are just coming out. They're being miseducated. They're not doing their homework. This is very important. When you part of something, you have to do your homework, no matter what you are, press, VP, or whatever you are, whatever, a regular member. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here today talking, a lot, talking shit because I like to do that, but I, I, I back it up. But the same way I'm, I'm sitting here, I could have any one of my members, and they're gonna sit here and they will say the same thing that I'm gonna say because we educate our team. You know, and this is where we're going wrong. A lot, of, a lot of clubs out there, they want numbers. Numbers don't make a team, numbers don't make loyalty. You understand? We always said our, our phrase was, it's not the quantity, it's the quality of your team and the love your team has for one another. Yeah, so as far as that, changing the game, I took off my hat because when I started this, I had hair. Now I don't, you know, I, I lost it, but um, it all comes with the territory, man, and it all comes about with, with, with changing the game. And when I mean changing the game, you know, every day in this lifestyle, we go through different changes and we go through different things. And um, us, all the clubs, we have to change to adapt to the changes that are happening in our community. So if us, all the clubs are willing to do it, why are these the new generation, these new clubs, are not willing to adapt to our lifestyle the way it is, the correct way, you know, follow protocols, follow channels. If you preach and practice it, you know, don't preach it. What do you think is the biggest change? The biggest change? From back then to what it is right now. The biggest change, number one is a lot of people back then, Every time you went to a party back then, it was only $5. And it was to support your local clubhouse. You had a lot of teams that don't even know this. And this is part of our history. And I feel if you're gonna get into this lifestyle, you have to know history. Back then, events were $5. Now it's like ridiculous. But for the love of the game, we still support it. Because if you're in a lifestyle like we are, and you decide, this is what I do and this is what I'm going to support, you're going to go forth with it. But you know, these are things that change as the years go by. And like I said, a lot of older clubs adapt to that change. New clubs are not adapting to that change. And this is where all the dis disagreements are because, you know, we get together, like I said earlier, we preach, but we don't practice it. But we practice it when it's convenient for you. When it's not convenient for you, you don't want to practice, but you want to preach it. And that's where the problem comes. See, I have a rule with my club. You know, like I said in the beginning of the interview, we started with over 15 members. Right now I got 15 members. Nine out of the 15 are original members. Because my theory was, and our rules was, you know what? One suggester, always a jester. Meaning that if you join my club, after you join my club, and you decide to leave my club, we're not giving you an authority or we're not giving you a green light to join another club. But since the game has changed and these are rules and regulations they have thrown in our community, we have had one member, well, ex-member, you know, we went through that and, you know, gave him the green light. But if we don't correct it when we do come together and we have these meetings and all these press meetings and we all in a room and we speak about what we speak about and everything is cool in that room then once we leave that room we don't hear from each other we see each other we don't acknowledge each other 
But then you want to stand up in the middle of a press meeting and you want to say, oh no, this is my brother, I don't got no problem with this, with him or with her. And you know, you want to shake hands. That's what the problem is. We have to practice what we preach. That's just the bottom line. As far as um, the lifestyle, our goal is, you know, to expand. Like, you know, right now, for those that didn't know, you know, probably a lot of clubs out there don't even know who those jesters are, but at the end of the day, you know, we was one of the originators in the Bronx when it comes to uh, the AC world. And we was the first club that opened the doors to all these other clubs to go and merge and party with MC clubs. And we still got MC clubs out there that could vouch for what I'm saying. And you got clubs out here that don't want to acknowledge it because of the ego. It's not about the ego. It's about giving respect to where it started and where we're going. You know, it's about the respect to the ones that were there before us, because after us, this is not going to stop. There's going to be a whole new generation. And the older ones are going to get older and the younger ones are going to get older. And a lot of us, you know, feel a certain type of way, but you know, we really don't feel, we don't feed into these things because it's just a lifestyle. And when you live a lifestyle, you gotta be ready and prepared to accept criticism. Because if you don't accept criticism, you cannot be part of this lifestyle. You're not gonna succeed in this lifestyle. And if you can't be a leader, you won't succeed in this lifestyle. You know, if you're gonna be a follower, that's the route you're gonna go your entire years that you are part of a club or you are president or founder of the club. Most important thing is leadership. Give respect to get respect. So where, where do you see like the lifestyle going in the next five years? Okay, like in the next five years, before I answer that, I'm going to be like, as, as far as for us, I'm speaking as for us right now, like from the beginning, we had a goal. And our goal right now is being fulfilled because uh, our goal was to expand, to expand this lifestyle, to keep the name alive. You know, the name of Los Justice, keep the name alive. And uh, we uh, have a Philly chapter, we've been out there since... Uh, 2005, 2006 roughly, and 2007, that's when really it got established and uh, we got going. So, you know, our goal is to expand. And Puerto Rico right now, we established in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, we got over 30 members right now in Puerto Rico. And it's Auto Club and MC Club because that's our goal. So like I said since day one, that was always our goal. As a community, I mean, a lot of people would question or think to themselves, why are these people out of club, but they also got MC on the vest? Because you know what? That was our goal from the beginning, and that's how we presented our colors, and everywhere we are planning to make a chapter, that's how we're gonna present our colors. Eventually, you know, there's gonna be had to make changes done, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. As far as this game, in the next five years, in the next five years, it's gonna be a lifestyle for the ones that are really living it and for the ones that don't know what they're doing. But when I sit back and look at it, it's gonna come a time, it could be five years, it could be less, that this game is not gonna have the respect we're supposed to have, because why? Because clubs are not being educated. Clubs are not doing their homework. And it's not about I know from A to Z, I know it all, no. Every day you learn something new in this lifestyle. And if you, wanna, if you don't wanna admit to that, you're in the wrong lifestyle. But every day, you are gonna learn something new from this one or from the other. And in the next five years, if we don't, and I'm gonna speak in general because I don't want nobody to feel a certain type of way. We have to put our ego aside and don't be afraid to reach out to all the clubs or to whoever you want to reach out to if you don't know something. Because the dumbest question is, is the one you don't ask. And the one you don't ask is the one that's gonna get you into trouble. 
because you got clubs out there that don't even know what colors are. You got clubs that don't know what the meanings of the colors are. So this is being looked at as not you specifically, it's affecting the whole community because we all, we all supposed to live the lifestyle by the same rules and regulations, but half of us are not because we are afraid to ask. All right, so um, for the regular person in the street that would wanna just take a look at this, and like what their first, like the perception is because you have vests, like it automatically makes you a game. Now you tell me like, what would you say up to that person? Well, it makes us a game because number one, we have members in clubs that want to put on this, want to put on vests, they want to put on colors, rags, however you want to call them, and think they're above the world and they're above the next person. Me, I feel like when I put this on, I'm going to be more polite and more respectful than, I, than when I don't have them on. So, a person in the street that approaches me or that I see, I'm going to treat them with more respect than me not having my colors on. Because by me doing that, I'm not only helping myself or my team because a lot of people in the street are not going to remember the name of your club. They're not going to remember your name. But they're going to remember a person with a vest. And if we don't treat the people in our community with respect, we are always gonna be looked at gang. But then again, we contradicting ourselves when we say we wanna do for our community and we wanna do for our community. But when you got colors on, you're not respecting your community. So it's either or. Either we're gonna do for the community or you're gonna put on colors to disrespect the community. You can do both. Okay, and um, meeting that we were speaking uh, about community, I want to throw this out there before um, we close it up. Um, you know, we, um, when I say we, I have um, right now, we got something that's called AOC, Association of Clubs. It's not a federation, this is not a coalition. You know, you could be part of a federation or you could be part of a coalition and you could still be part of AOC. AOC stands for Association of Clubs doing something from the community. The reason for this is, you know what, if we get together and we do for our community, like right now we got 11, uh, we got 10 clubs right now at the moment. And we got a couple of clubs pending, but you know, we're not looking for numbers. We're looking for clubs that are well established and know what direction they want to go and clubs that are positive. We got Los Jesses, we got After Dark Riders, we have All Out, we have Loved Ones AC, we have Breaking Chains, we have Rome Riders, we got FOL, Family of Loyalty. We got True Aces, MC, Social Club. And we have Loyal Knights, AC. And yeah, I believe it's nine and yeah, it is nine. I said 10. But uh, you know, we're picking and choosing. It's not a federation, it's not a coalition. We're not under nobody. That's not our intention. Like I said, if you are part of federation or coalition, you're more than welcome to reach out to AOC and make it happen because it's for the community, it's not for my individual club, it's not to benefit me or the other club, it's to help our community or any fundraisers that we have to do for any community. Like we're willing to go out of state. This is what we're trying to do, it is our goal, it's called networking within each other. You know, it's not a board, nobody's in charge, we grown ass people like I said. If you're a leader and not a follower, you know what direction you're going, AOC is there. This is what it's about. It's about leadership and doing for the community. And as far as for my club, Los Jesters, uh, we have, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we got our PA, we got our Puerto Rico chapters already established. And you know, our goal for the future is, man, like, out of all these hundred clubs, 
that we got within our community. When I say our community, I'm speaking about the Bronx itself and Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and Mount Vernon, Yonkers, and all these other clubs that are, are close to our, to our borough. You know, my goal is to be able to one day, all of us come together and like do positive things for one another, for our community, and for each other. Instead of um, always looking elsewhere to do what we gotta do for each other. Like, I mean, there's enough of, there's enough of us out here to be united and to be together and to go where we wanna go. Like, my goal is, like I said, is always to expand and always be available like my clubs is not gonna close the doors. Me personally, I won't, I'm, I'm not closing the doors to nobody that wants to learn. You know, I'm available. So whenever a club do wanna learn, I'm available to teach. And that's our main goal. Our main goal is to teach the right thing, to practice what we preach, and to do the right thing, not for me, but for everybody that's wearing colors, or vests, or rags. That's where we're trying to go. That's our direction. Do the right thing, do things positive, and most important, everything with respect. So, you know, I'm gonna shout out, I'm gonna shout out Stone 300 and how your team for giving us the opportunity and giving me the acknowledgement of standing here and probably to uh, let other people that are in this lifestyle that didn't know about us know that we assist, that we are here, we're gonna be around and we're not going nowhere. Um, shout out Brooklyn and I'm not gonna mention club by club because we're gonna go on forever. Brooklyn, but you know all these clubs in Brooklyn where we hit, you know, you see us out there. I mean, Queens, Manhattan, uh, Virginia, Baltimore. South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, we'll be, the, we'll be in Myrtle as a matter of fact on Memorial Weekend. We'll be there in Myrtle again. Um, Ocean City, Baltimore, I mean North Carolina, South Carolina, we've been everywhere. You know I mean? I can't go club by club. So I'm just gonna give a shout out to um, everybody that's living this lifestyle. It's a beautiful thing when we do the right thing. Love and respect to all.